Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So uh, today we're going to look at whether uh, gold's role as a hedge uh, against inflation is finished. It's uh, no more. Uh, and silver for that matter. A and why do I say that? Well, because we had the CPI data come out yesterday. It was a lot higher than expected uh, year on year. It was expected around 4.9, came out at 5.4%. Uh, and gold and silver didn't do much. Uh, one would have expected gold and silver to be a lot higher. Even I would have expected a little bit uh, more uh, movement in the price of precious metals. But uh, yes, there's a lot of factors that uh, affect the, the price of gold and silver. We know there's a lot of uh, paper games going on uh, amongst the bullion banks, uh, the speculators, and uh, we know that uh, uh, the powers that be don't don't like to see gold and silver go up too much on on, on these kinds of numbers. But uh, I'll prove to you uh, that I, I don't think the gold and silver's uh, role as a hedge against inflation is finished and I'll look back in history uh, for that or we'll look back in, uh, in the 1960s and 70s and see what happened then to CPI and gold for that matter uh, before I continue though I'd like to say I did a panel with Wall Street Silver YouTube channel uh, the other day uh, I was on with Jim Lewis Lee Justo and Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin, and we spoke about inflation and food shortages uh, and the Cuba uh, protests. Uh, so, yeah, I recommend you watch that. It was a pretty good uh, panel, I thought. It's 20 minutes long. I I'll put uh, the video up in the cards above and also a, a link uh, below in the description. And if you haven't joined Wall Street Silver uh, Reddit group, if you're on Reddit, you should join. The community there is growing. Yes, things have slowed down recently, but uh, I don't think the silver squeeze uh, movement is uh, over by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, we're having a lull right now. Silver prices are still pretty strong compared to a year ago, but they're just like consolidating, in my opinion, before they move a lot higher. So, Yes, it was frustrating yesterday. We saw that uh, <laughs> uh, bond yields actually dropped <laughs> after the higher than expected CPI, which is pretty uh, puzzling, of course. Uh, where are the bond vigilantes, right? Uh, some of you might have heard about the bond vigilantes. So yeah, that was a big thing in the uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s. The bond vigilantes, they kept... Uh, Uncle Sam in check. Uh, if we had very strong data for the economy, if CPI and inflation was overheating, uh, bond, bond markets would sell off, yields would go up, and it would limit uh, how much government uh, could borrow and spend. But for the last 20 years, I would say, uh, the Federal Reserve, the central bankers, uh, the propaganda machine, the management of perception economics, the new instruments like TIPS that are manipulated by the Fed, uh, they, they've kept the bond vigilantes at bay. So the bond vigilantes for now, uh, they're as good as extinct, I would say. Yes, bond yields did rise towards the end of the day yesterday because there was a 30-year auction that didn't go as well as expected. But uh, is that a sign that uh, the bond market is turning? The fact that the, a 30-year auction didn't go very well. Uh, having worked in the bond markets for 20 years or more, actually, I would say uh, that was just a blip. Uh, if it continues, if we continue to see bond auctions or treasury auctions uh, not perform as well in the future, then we have to start thinking about it. But, but for now, it looks like the bond market is completely... Uh, uh, comfortable with the Fed's narrative that this is all transitory. I I'm not so sure. And uh, we're going to look back uh, today, of course, as I said earlier, to the 1970s. And for that, 
I've taken data from the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis. So our good friend, Neil Kashkari, who used to work for Goldman Sachs, who I think uh, went to work for the Fed to help him with all the uh, new plans or, or new uh, tools that they develop after the 08 crisis to bail out his friends, of course, at Goldman Sachs and at the other banks. He's the president now <laughs> at the Federal Reserve uh, Bank of Minneapolis. Uh, I saw a headline last week that he's going to force anyone who works for that bank to have you know what yeah and if you don't have it uh, you can't work for them anymore that's how uh, Neil Kashgari works but let's focus on on the CPI so yeah uh, this uh, private bank the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis because it is a private bank they've got data going back to 1913 which is interesting <laughs> that's when the Fed was uh, um, created uh, by Congress. So I've looked back uh, from around the mid 60s and you can see that in 1964, uh, the year uh, I was born, Monaco 64, uh, the CPI rose by 1.3%, then 65, 1.6. And then in 66, it, it, it starts taking off kind of it rose by three percent 67 2.8 uh and then 68 4.3 up until then the price of gold was fixed at 35 dollars an ounce the london gold pool uh, was desperately trying to keep that official price at 35 uh, and also the the free uh market price in london but it was in 68 that it failed the London gold, gold pool, which was a, a group of central banks who had decided in the early 60s to um, come out and control the market by selling gold at $35 an ounce in order to maintain that Bretton Woods peg of uh, $35 an ounce for the US dollar. They, they gave up and, and the French uh, they were a big part of uh, the uh, dissolution of the London gold pool. But you can see why it, it failed after uh, three or four years of inflation. Uh, these central bankers, these other countries realized that the U.S. was inflating the system. So and then it took off, of course, uh, in 69, five and a half, 75.8 uh, and by 1974, uh, the uh, CPI had gone into double digits to 11.1%. And uh, yes, after that, it came off, but it was still rising over 5% throughout the 70s. And then it really uh, picked up again, got into high gear in 1979, 80, and 81. So and it, it was in double digits throughout those years. So yeah, it wasn't a great period for uh, investors anywhere around the world. Uh, it wasn't a great period for people on fixed incomes, usually retirees or, or pensioners, as they're called here in the UK. So just wanted to uh, see what gold did back in that period. And, and I've got a chart here from Bar Chart. Going back to uh, 1970, that's as far as they, they go. And uh, you can see that uh, by then, gold had broken out of that uh, $35 peg. I think it were trading. Yeah, we're trading still around 35. But by, uh, let's see, 1972, we were trading at 70 already. And you can see that in 74, which was the first time in that decade that CPI went into double digits, we got up to almost 200. But from uh, December 74 uh, to, let's see, August 76, uh, gold dropped from 200 to, to like 100. So it lost 50% of its value, even though uh, inflation was still raging, CPI was still over 5%. Uh, and then Towards the end of the 70s, uh, gold started picking up and it only traded towards that 200 level uh, 
about four years after it had been at 200. And then all of a sudden gold started ramping up. Yes, there were other uh, things happening in the world back then, like the uh, Soviet Union invading Afghanistan in 1979, the Iranian revolution where the Shah of Iran was deposed. You had the Iranian hostage crisis. You had a lot of uh, geopolitical things going on. Price of oil spiked as well because of that Iranian crisis and the hostage crisis. Yeah, and uh, I spoke to uh, one of my old friends from the city a few weeks ago, and he told me, uh, you know, a lot of bull markets, uh, the major moves are made towards the last third of that bull market. So you need to be patient. So there we go. Uh, I don't think uh, gold and silver are finished as a hedge against inflation. Uh, am I saying it's going to take another four years for, for us to break through that 2075 high we saw last year in gold, 2075? I don't know. Uh, but all I'm saying is that uh, Things don't go perfectly in these markets. Uh, I'm sure there is a lot of manipulation in the 70s as well uh, with the uh, creation of COMEX. Uh, you can see that COMEX, of course, was created. Not COMEX itself, excuse me. Uh, the gold contract, GC, uh, was created on the 31st of December, 1974. Uh, is it any coincidence I don't think so that gold topped right before uh, that date uh, January 1st 1975 where Americans were allowed to own gold again uh, for the first time since 1933 uh, I don't think so I, I think the COMEX was used as you can see as uh, an instrument of manipulating the price lower they bought a bit of time maybe gold would have gone a lot higher if the COMEX uh, futures contract for gold hadn't be, been launched. There are, of course, and I've spoken about this, WikiLeaks document uh, between uh, the UK and US governments talking about this, that uh, COMEX would help keep Americans from buying physical and it would keep the price of gold uh, highly volatile and put people off. Yeah, and that's what they want you to do because it's their money. You're not supposed to have it because uh, you're sheeple, right? That's the way they think and they still think the same way. So that's why I don't think the uh, bull market in gold and silver, uh, I don't think it's finished by any stretch of the imagination. So I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I did a little calculation uh, if you take the CPI index itself from January to, to June, it's gone up by almost 8% on a 12-month basis. So, and about 3.4% uh, um, on a six-month basis. So, we're going to have at least 3.4% CPI in 2021. Uh, I think it will be higher, of course, because uh, the CPI index is not going to stop here. Uh, so I would say we get five to maybe even eight percent CPI. Um, and uh, we, we just need to uh, be thankful that we can still buy uh, gold and silver. We can get out of this depreciating fiat currency, which is the dollar. Uh, not only the dollar, but the pound, the euro, all fiat currencies are going to go uh, down uh, because of inflation. Today we had some uh, data from, from the UK, um, CPI data, RPI. I, I would focus on the RPI because the RPI is almost like uh, how they used to calculate uh, inflation here prior to the CPI. And they don't want people to look at the RPI because it's always a lot higher. The RPI came out at 3.9% was expected 3.4. They're going to focus on the CPI. CPI came out at 2.5% was expected 2.2. Uh, yeah, it's a joke, 2.5%. We know things are going up a lot more than that here in the UK. So with that, let's look at where the markets are this morning. 
It's uh, a little later than usual, uh, than lately, really. I've been doing my videos a little earlier lately, but uh, it's 10 past 9 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at, at 18.13. It's up just over $5. Uh, the high has been 18.15 and the low 18.04. Uh, I would say 18.18, 18.20. That's the key resistance right now for gold. Uh, we need to break that to see the market continuing higher. Uh, on a weekly basis, the, the gold chart looks pretty good still, quite positive. On a daily basis, it's been very frustrating because every time we get up a little bit towards that uh, resistance level, it sells off. And when it goes back down to around 1800 or just below that, it comes back up. So still in that narrow range, silver is up seven cents right now at 2605. The Dow future is down 73 points. NASDAQ is down five. S&P futures down eight. The FTSE, uh, the UK FTSE 100 is down 42 at 70, uh, 80 or 7,080. And uh, the FTSE was trading around 7,000 back in 1999. So that's how well the FTSE has done over the last 20 years or so. Um, sterling is a little stronger, up uh, a quarter of a percent at 138.46. Uh, the euro is up an eighth of a percent at 1.1788. The dollar is down an eighth versus the yen at 1.1050. And the dollar is uh, unchanged versus the yuan at 6.4774. Uh, having a look at the uh, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar is at 74.50. It's pretty steady, uh, really not moving that much. And the dollar is uh, unchanged versus the uh, Canadian dollar at 125.10. To the uh, other commodities, uh, the non-monetary commodities now, WTI crude is down half a percent at 74.40. High-grade copper is down just under half a percent at 428.33. Yes, I, I saw that lumber has been... Uh, coming down quite sharply. I did speak about lumber a week or so ago, and uh, I said that I thought it would come down and that it would hold uh, this trend line here, but it looks like we've even gone under the trend line here on a monthly basis. So uh, does this mean that uh, the inflation is finished just because lumber prices are going down? Uh, no. I I think the inflation is going uh, into different places at different times. And uh, I'm sure we're going to see something uh, massive go up, uh, you know, in the next month or so. Some other commodity uh, people are focusing a lot of used cars as if uh, the price of used cars ca cause inflation. We know, of course, the inflation is caused by the central banks. If you've been listening to me for the last few years, you, you should know by now what the definition of inflation is, that it's the creation of uh, money and credit out of thin air, because that credit will eventually flow uh, as money, as currency into the real economy. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.